So anyway, well, listen, it's good to be with you. If you'll please turn to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. And um, we want to look at one verse here before we start with this message. And Hebrews chapter 11. Now, I disagree with a lot of Christians about one thing for sure. I believe that you can prove there is a God. Now, a lot of Christians say you can't prove there's a God. I disagree with that, you know. Now, but that's my privilege. Amen? Amen. <laughs> but I disagree because I disagree because of this, of this book. Amen? Amen? So now that's important. That's my guide. Not you, not another pastor or whatever. This is my guide. Now, if you will, turn to Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. Now, faith is a substance. Substance. What is substance? Well, that's something solid. Amen? Come on. It's something solid. Okay. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, when you go to court, you have to have evidence. Amen? So there's substance and evidence, the Bible says, that faith is based on. Now, here's the thing. I also believe that God is based on substance and evidence, you know. And matter of fact, in several of the Old Testament books, it's God says, prove me and I will show you of things to come. And so he actually says that God will show people of things to come. So there's no excuse for anybody, whether they're in Indonesia or China or Asia or Mexico or America, about God. Do you hear me? So there's no excuse for that at all. So if a, the Bible says they shall be without excuse over there in Romans chapter 1. So, and by the way, God gives a three-point witness to everyone in the world, creation, conscience, and the Word of God. Amen? See? Now, God says that over there in Romans chapter 1 and 2. Now, if you don't believe that, look it up. It's there. Now, the thing about it is, is that we need to understand that a lot of people today denying that there is a God. Come on, we all know that. We're in the last days, folks. Come on. We know that, too. And the thing is, is that we're seeing these things all over the world. However, that doesn't mean that we have to accept what they say. You see? I don't have to believe what they say. Matter of fact, it's probably better not to. Amen? You know? So all I'm saying is this. We, as Christians, need to have an answer of the hope that's within us. And that's important to do. Now, let's have a word of prayer. Now, Father, we plead the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, His Son, to cleanse us from all sin. I pray to God to help my speech with his grace, season with salt, and Lord, to help me say what I need to say, do what I need to do, and Lord, that the Holy Spirit will manifest himself here today, and Lord, that you would be glorified and honored and lifted up. Get me out of the way, Lord, and may you be lifted up. We thank you for being good to us. Pray to God to help with this message. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, the thing is this, is that I'm going to be talking about some things this morning, and I want to ask this question. How many, is there anybody here familiar with the children's magazine, Ranger Rick? Oh, okay, two, okay, three, all right. Ranger Rick, okay, probably familiar with it. Good, thank you for letting me see that. Now, many people don't know who they are, but it's a magazine for kids, and it's not a Christian magazine. But it's good. It's got about creation and all that stuff, animals and all that stuff. However, we're going to be talking about a Ranger Rick magazine this morning. I'm going to use it as a basis of where we're going to, and you'll see where I'm going in a minute. Now, the thing about it is this. Okay, I'm going to stand over here and get out of the way. Now, the Bible says, And God made the beasts of the earth and cattle and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good, Genesis 1.25. Now, the Bible also says, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good, Genesis 1.31. So God originally said these things were good and his creation. Now, squirrels, rattlesnakes, and pythons. Now, that's the title of my subject today. Oh, I can't get that. Okay, all right, good. I knock it off. Okay, here we go. Probably if you'll get this, please. <laughs> okay. Now, thanks. Appreciate that. Oh, that sounds better, doesn't it? Okay, good. All right, thanks, preacher. <laughs> now, the thing about it is, now that's an unusual title, but we're going to try to 
talk about God and using these things. Now, as we look at this, it seems like an uneven match. In one corner, the unassuming California ground squirrel. In another, the rattlesnake, more than twice the length of the squirrel and armed with lethal venom. So we know that you don't play with a rattlesnake if you got sense. Amen? Come on now. I used, to, I used to know this one guy years ago when I was in school, and he had a pet rattlesnake, no joke, a pygmy rattler in a cage. One day he got his hand too close. Well, guess what? It got him. And with only one thing now. Now, a pygmy rattlesnake is more poisonous than a regular rattlesnake. It got him. Thank God he was right across the street from the hospital. He said, no joke, this is his word, he felt like taking a gun and blowing his finger off because it hurt so bad from that rattlesnake. So you don't play with snakes that are like that. Amen? You know, that's just common sense. So here's the thing. Now, we find out here this is a squirrel, and they have an enemy called a rattlesnake. Now, we find out, but the squirrel often gets an unexpected upper hand with his fight against the enemy, the rattlesnake. Now, predators and prey. A predator eats the animal. Prey is the one that is eaten. Now we find out one of the most unseen problems that exists in the natural world is the balance between predators and prey. Many people do not understand that if there is, were no predators, plant-eating animals would eventually be so numerous that they would uh, run out of food and die of starvation. And by the way, that's happened up north with the deer population. The deer got so numerous that the, literally they were eating everything and, and, and they literally were dying of starvation. So they had to have a balance. So what they did was they had hunters go in and shoot a bunch of them to balance the uh, equation. Okay, that's what they did. As a matter of fact, my wife went deer hunting several years ago. She got a six-point buck first shot. I mean, really. I mean, that was really good with our car. Anyway, <laughs> well, you're not supposed to go hunting with your car. Amen? Come on now. So <laughs> it totaled our car. But, you know, God was in it. We were able to get a better vehicle than what we had. But, uh, but thank God uh, we weren't hurt in this very, very serious way. We could have been because that deer went 15 feet up in the air. And we weren't going fast. We were only doing like 45. You know, that's not fast. Amen? You think until the deer hits you, you know? <laughs> so anyway, that's what happens. So we find out this. Many people don't understand that if there were no predators, plant-eating animals would eventually be so numerous that they would run out of food and die of starvation. Now, we talked about that. Now, a death far more terrible than the quick deaths that predators inflict upon them. So it's a lot harsher on the animal to die slowly of starvation. You would not like to die of starvation. As a matter of fact, many of you would really not like it. <laughs> anyway, so here's the thing. If predators are, are, are too efficient, they can wipe out the plant eaters that are their prey, and they would die of starvation themselves. So that, there has to be a balance there. Now, as we look at this, there is the presence of highly designed systems in the prey which prevent overeating by the predators. Now, ground squirrels often offer a great example of this, and in California, new studies have shown a highly designed system that prevents their primary enemy, the rattlesnake, from killing them all. Now, let's face it. Rattlesnakes are there. Rattlesnakes are here, matter of fact, too. Amen? Yeah. You see? Matter of fact, I've heard of people getting out of the car and stepping on them <laughs> in Alabama. I'm serious. So you don't want that. Amen? So, so we find out this. The rattlesnake is a highly designed system, have, uh, has one of its own that helps it find adequate prey. Now, rattlesnakes have a sensor in their cheeks which pick up infrared radiation or heat radiation given off by warm-blooded animals. On a totally dark night or in a dark cave, a rattlesnake can see a mouse or other warm-blooded prey because they see the heat radiation coming from the animal. As a matter of fact, man has copied this system to make infrared scopes which allow night vision used so extensively by the United States military. And by the way, hunters use them today. If you can afford them, <laughs> they're not cheap. Amen? You see? But if you hunt at night, which is allowed ab about certain animals, you know, you can hunt certain animals at night, uh, they use infrared scopes. However, notice it. The problem is that an animal like the ground squirrel could, could be wiped out by rattlesnakes if it did not have some method of com combating the infrared abilities of the snake. So how in the world can a, can a squirrel take on a snake? Well, that's what we're going to find out. Now, we find out this. Scientists studying this relationship have seen that when a rattlesnake is around ground squirrels, the squirrels move their tails up and down in a display called flagging. Now, 
Many of you have probably seen that with squirrels around here. They bounce their tails. Amen? Come on. All right. However, the, the California ground squirrels are really active about it. It's not just a normal thing like you see the squirrel here. It's really an, an aggressive thing. As we look at this, now this is what the squirrel looks like here. As you can see, it's bigger than the squirrels around here. Amen? You see? Now, up in New York, the squirrels are squirrels. Down here, they're rats. But anyway, but, <laughs> but anyway, up there, they are. They're, they're big. And when you shoot a squirrel, you have something to eat, you know? Down here, well, you might have a little bit to eat, but not much. However, the squirrels will kick sand at the snake and nip the snake's tail. But all the while they are doing this, the squirrel's tail is moving in a wild, erratic motion. Now, notice this. This squirrel is actually taking on a rattler. Now, that is not a wise thing to do unless you know what you're doing. Notice this. Studies have shown that when the squirrel starts the flagging behavior, the tail heats up, giving off larger and larger amounts of infrared radiation. So there's now who taught the squirrel to do that? Think about that, you know. Oh, it just just happened by accident. Evolution, you know, hogwash. I have real problems, but I've been insulted by evolutionists, too. I really have. You know, this this one biology teacher, he said, well, you know, you don't you don't believe in evolution. Well, you're stupid. He called me that to my face. Now, years ago, that wouldn't have been good. <laughs> but anyway, but I'm saved now. So it makes a difference. Amen. <laughs> you know? So anyway, we find out. Notice this. The flooding of the rattlesnake's infrared sensor is so total that the snake will usually give up and crawl away. So he overpowers the snake by his tail of all things. Now, who would ever think that the squirrel would know to do that? Well, I know how he knows. God gives him the wisdom. Now, they call it instinct. You know why they use the word instinct? Because they don't want to say God. You hear me? That's the idea. So they get rid of God every way that they can in schools and all the rest of that. So they teach young people that there is no God and all the rest of that. And that you're here as an accident. And you're not an accident. Red, yellow, black, or white. They are precious in his sight. Amen? I'm telling you. Now, you're a human being. 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 Amen? Come on now. Now, there's no animals here. You're all human beings, and Jesus Christ died for you. You see? You're not an animal, okay? Now, if you're an animal, just shoot you, eat you, and go on. Come on. That doesn't sound quite right, does it? No, it doesn't. Now, we find out this. Notice this. So, what is absolutely amazing is that if a gopher snake that does not have the infrared sensing ability approaches the squirrel, the squirrel's tail does not heat up. Now, how does he know that? You see what I'm saying? Evolution cannot explain this stuff, I'm telling you. So as we look at only when the squirrel is endangered by, by snakes with infrared ability does the tail heat up and give off the flood, a flood of infrared signals. Now, how can the squirrels recognize the type of snake approaching them and heat up and, or not heat up in response? How could they do that? Matter of fact, some of you don't know the difference. Come on. Because some of you say, oh, snake, but you don't know if it's poisonous or not. Come on, you know that. And sometimes it's a mistake to think it's not poisonous when it is, you know. So here we find out this. This is impossible if you try to maintain that this came about by evolutionary chance processes. Smelly ground squirrels fool hungry rattlesnakes. You say, what? Well, what happens is, in their attempts to reduce the likelihood of being killed, prey species have the ability to smell like their predators to discourage pursuit or attack. Female California ground squirrels and rock squirrels chew on the skins shed by rattlesnakes, then lick themselves and their pups. Yuck! That does not smell, that doesn't seem good. However, this snake scent application to their fur anoints the squirrels with the odor of their enemy. Now, who taught them that? Think about that. Now, you wouldn't think of that. But the squirrels do. However, we find out this behavior is a wonderful illustration of how God protects the weaker animal. Now, snake-scented ground squirrels evade attack because they no longer smell tasty. Now, some of you, you know, this afternoon, you're going to go, boy, that smells good. 
Now, nobody wants to smell rotten eggs. Amen? Come on, let's, let's face it. No, I mean, how many of you remember sulfur water? Anybody here? Okay, yeah. Oh, that's not a good smell. That's not a good smell at all. So anyway, I remember as a kid, you know, I was, I was on the farm, and we had sulfur water. That's all we had. And you learned to get along with it, but that didn't mean you liked it. You know what I'm saying? So as a thing, the weaker adult females and juveniles are known to spend more time applying scent than did the adult males. Adult ground squirrels have developed a certain amount of immunity to snake venom, and their agility and their agility helps them avoid strikes. Okay, watch this. But their pups are still vulnerable, and due to maternal instinct, adults disguise their scents by chewing on the discarded skins of rattlers and licking the pup. So that's what they're doing. Now, first the squirrel uses infrared tail to confuse the snake. Then it uses the snake's own scent to make it seem untasty. Who taught them that? Well, obviously God did. To sit there and say it's it's accidental thing, come on now. Accidents happen all the way down through history. No, no, that, that's not going to work. What about the first squirrel that didn't know that? Whoops, <laughs> he's gone. So he's not going to teach anybody else. Dead animals don't evolve. You got that? <laughs> so that's the way it is. Now, there is design in the survival equipment of all living things, and that's a fact. If you really study animals the way that you need to, you'll find that there's design and important features in every animal that exists. That, that also helps them to defend themselves and all the rest. Now, these are two examples that show the wisdom and design that God has built into all parts of the natural world. The Bible says, for by him, that's Jesus Christ, were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, all things were created by him and for him, Colossians 1.16. Now, as we look at this, we find out pythons, big squeezes. Now, we're all familiar with pythons. Let's face it, it's not exactly my favorite animal to hang around with. I, I don't want to be around them. Uh, some pythons just love their owners, if you get what I'm saying. <laughs> so anyway, as we look at this, the Bible says this, But ask now the beasts, and they shall teach thee, and the fowls of the air, and they shall tell thee. Or speak to the earth, and it shall teach thee, and to the fishes of the sea shall declare unto thee, Who knoweth not in all these that the hand of the Lord hath wrought this? Job chapter 12. That's a very, very overlooked verse right there. Now, as a look, Ranger Rick magazine. Come on, that look familiar to you now, some of you? Well, sure. All right. National Wildlife Federation. So this is not a Christian magazine. Now, watch closely, because you're going to see Bible all through this thing, that they talk about, and they don't know they're using the Bible, I think. I'll be honest with you. Now, have you ever made a list of animals that really scare you? If so, you might have put pythons near, right near the top. What about the list of animals that you think are neat? Well, pythons might have been on that list too. However, uh, as you can see, they're sort of creepy. <laughs> now, about 20 species of pythons live in the tropics of Africa, Asia, Australia, and a few Pacific islands. Most pythons are large, and some are very large, okay? And they're famous for wrapping claws of their body around their prey and then squeezing it to death. And so that's what they do. Now, we find out this. Some people have always paid a lot of attention to pythons. Some people have feared them, and some have even worshipped them. Now, we all know you're not supposed to worship false gods and all the rest of that, but these people actually worship this animal. Now, as a matter of fact, you have a lot of people worshipping animals today instead of God. They make animals God instead of God God. And we find that the you find it that this is happening all over the world today. Now, here's the thing. So these animals are very, very big, some of them. Here are just a few of the stories, watch this, and legends that people have told down through the centuries about pythons. As we look at this, supersized pythons. Now this is right out of Ranger Rick magazine, the picture, okay? Now, in Australia, natives told stories about pythons so huge that it stretched across the sky like a rainbow. All the way across the sky like a rainbow. Now, they believed that the giant python marked out the pathways of, for rivers and guarded all streams. It's a fact. Some species of pythons are real-life giants. They're among the longest of any animals living today. Today's record holder is a reticulated python of Southeast Asia, it is long as a school bus, about 33 feet long. Now, we know that's, folks, 33 feet is a good long distance. 
if you don't think so, uh, swim it underwater. You'll see what I'm saying. Now, this python is somewhat big, as you can see, and this guy's got his kids and his wife there. Oh, that bothers me. So anyway, this one's real big, as you can see, much, much bigger than the last one you saw. This is a man's pet. As we look at this, now this one here is absolutely huge in the forest here, as you see. Now, really, really big. Scientists think that some ancient pythons took the grand prize for size. In Egypt, scientists found an old fossil of a python that was 50 feet long. Now, that's a big creature, 50 feet. Uh, how wide is this church? About 50 feet. So that's from that wall to that wall. That's big. You, it might not look big to you, but it is. As we look at this, pythons and coats from some from south, Southeast Asia comes a story about how python got its colorful skin. According to this legend, the first python in the world was white. Do you hear me? Now watch this closely. Like that. However, one day he, oh, you're seeing adultery, bestiality, fornication, right here. Here it is. And the Bible is talking about that, and the Bible condemns that. Amen? Now, as we look at this, one day he fell in love with a woodcutter's wife, his wife, and the two ran away and got married. Watch this. Later, the wife made the python a beautiful coat of many colors. He was so pleased that he wore it forever. So to this day, the story goes, pythons wear beautiful coats uh, like this one here. <coughs> Adultery and bestiality and so forth. Now, the Bible says this. Now, this is what the Bible says. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, there it is, watch this, thou hast, this is Lucifer, Satan here, thou hast been in the garden of Eden, garden, Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, the topaz, topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and, and gold, and the workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Now, thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee, Ezekiel 28. That's talking about the devil, or Lucifer. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down from to the ground which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation of the sides of the north, Isaiah 14. That's a great passage dealing with Lucifer. Now, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High, that's God. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit, Isaiah 14, verse 15 also. Lucifer now, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transferred into an angel of light, 2 Corinthians 11. Now, if you've read your Bible, you know this verse. Also, we find out the facts. A large python sometimes may attack an animal the size of a deer or pig. This photo shows an Indian python eating a deer. The python spent hours swallowing the prey and often stopping to rest. At one meal, that one meal may last for a month, okay? But no python can eat an elephant, or could it? Well, elephant eating pythons, this is in legend now. Okay, Greek soldiers once told stories about pythons that could eat an ox or a large deer at his, in a single gulp. The ancient Chinese wrote about a giant paw snake that could eat a whole elephant. Uh, the paw snake, they said, took three years to digest the elephant, and then it threw up the bones. And by the way, that's what a snake does now, throws up the bones. So as we find out, what about pythons attacking people? Well, about 2,000 years ago, a Roman soldier in Africa reported seeing a snake 120 feet long that had killed hundreds of men. And they said, uh, they said they finally managed to kill the snake with big rocks. Later, the leader of the army was honored for his great victory. Now, this is a 129-foot-long snake, and that's what it would look like compared to a human. Now, that's a big creature. Now, if threatened by enemies, pythons usually try to crawl away and hide. Pythons can disappear into, into surprisingly small holes and cracks, but if that doesn't work, they may hiss and strike to scare their enemies away. To protect itself from harm, a ball python might curl itself into a ball with a, ball with a head in, tucked inside, like this one here. 
Where's the head? Well, it's inside. Now, two-headed python, there is such a thing. Well, not really. We find out the tail, the two small, the two-headed python has a tail that looks a lot like its head. So that's why it's deceitful. Now, the snake may try to protect itself by moving its tail back and forth like a head. Meanwhile, it keeps its true head tucked away between the coils of its body. If an enemy attacks, the snail's tail may be injured, but its head most likely will be safe. And this is a two-headed python here. He's, and notice his head is covered, but the tail is wiggling back and forth. Now, so we find out, the Bible says, And the Lord God said to the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shall, be, shall thou eat all the days of thy life. Genesis 3.14 and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Genesis 3, 15. Supernatural pythons. Now, we're going to talk about this. As we notice, people in Africa have worshipped the python as the god of wisdom. Notice that? The devil, Lucifer, the serpent, said, Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And he said, You'll have wisdom that most people don't have. So that was his temptation. Now, or a god of war. Now, some couple planning to get married would come to a captive python for a blessing. Pythons were also thought to bring good crops. And what, in one legend, a python was present at the birth of the parents of mankind. And that's taken right out of the ranger book. Right there. Okay? This is not a misquote. It's right out of that book. Now, the people were born blind. There it is. Right out of that book, but the python touched their eyes and gave them sight. Oh, yeah, he sure did. And to the, to the horrible curse of all mankind, the Bible says, For as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so all men have sinned. You know, we know that verse. That's Romans 5, 12, I think. So we find out. Notice this. Okay. We know that who the serpent was, of course, today, being Christians. Amen? Now, remember, the average person reading this doesn't know this. But we know. We know because we know the Bible. As we look at the serpent, it said, For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Genesis 3 5. There it is, right there, folks. Now, who would ever dream that Ranger Rick magazine would be so biblical? <laughs> you see? That's wild. As we look at it. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also to her husband with her, and, and he did eat, Genesis 3, 6. Now, wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned, Romans 5, 12. It wasn't 5, 10, it was 5, 12. Okay, now, from the fall until now, there has been sin in this world, as we study about the python, we can learn spiritual truths. The Bible also says this, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, there it is, called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. And that's what we're seeing today. I honestly believe that teaching evolution is, uh, uh, according to first, I mean, the book of Thessalonians, where it talks about they shall be under strong delusion. Do you hear me? So many people are under strong delusion, believing a lie. You see? That's what I believe with all my heart. And if I didn't believe that, I wouldn't preach it. As we look at this, we find this. One day the devil would be cast into hell, and there will be no more war with Satan. What a wonderful day that will be. Amen. Now, notice this. Let's summarize. God made the world. He owns it. He makes the rules like the Ten Commandments. Okay? We are guilty of breaking God's rules. Notice this. Have you ever lied? If you say no, you just lied. <laughs> okay, you got it? All right. Now, folks, let me say this. I remember, especially with young, young people, sometimes, well, I never lied. Oh, you just lied. <laughs> okay. You know, matter of fact, a baby comes out of the womb, and at birth, many times it's lying. Why? Because it wants attention, and he's crying. Ah, ah, ah. You say, what's wrong? What's wrong? Nothing. He just wants attention. Come on. Yeah, babies. <laughs> All right. Have you ever coveted? Well, lusted in your heart, stolen something, disobeyed your parents, disobeyed your parents, 
disobeyed your parents? No. If you say no, you just lied. Back to number one, okay? Notice this. Committed adultery, well, then God says that you've broken his law. As we look at this, God says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen? Now, the wages of sin is death. That's why people die, because everybody has sinned. And sin causes death. That's all there is to it. Now, one day, my friend, you will die. And these gravestones are all different sizes and shapes and colors. Like I said before, red, yellow, black, or white, they are precious in his sight. However, all people will die. That's why it's good to know Jesus Christ as Savior. Because if you go on to be with the Lord, you go that way and not that way. Because if you go that way, there is no return. You go that way, well, guess what? You get a new glorified body if you're saved. Amen? Yeah. Wouldn't it be good to get a new glorified body? Amen? Come on, folks. We're old enough. I'm good. Hey. Had trouble with your hands? Come on. Amen. Me too. <laughs> As you can see, I had trigger finger. That's not from shooting too much. Uh, okay. It's, it's when your finger locks in place and you can't use it, you know, and it's real painful to straighten it out or grab, you know. That's what I had, trigger finger. So I had an operation. That's why I have this thing on my hand. So anyway, all I'm saying is this. One day, when a person is saved, God is going to give a new glorified body and have a perfect body. Amen. You know, and perfect wisdom and perfect knowledge and, and perfect speech and perfect everything. You know, what a blessing that'll be. Boy, haven't you ever thought, man, it'd be good to be perfect? It would be. Well, if we're saved, you can be. Amen? You see? So all I'm saying is this, is that God says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Notice what it says. One day you will die, my friend. When the death angel comes your way, how will it be with you? Okay, notice this. Will it be hell or will it be heaven? Heaven is a wonderful place, full of glory and grace. I want to see my Savior's face. Heaven is a wonderful place. No more sin, no more crying, no more dying, no more COVID. <laughs> Amen. You know, no more cancer. No more heart problems, no more kidney problems, amen, all the rest of that. And no more back problems. How about that, folks? You ever get up in the morning? Ooh, you know, oh, well, it's time to stretch again. You know, come on, you all know what I mean. Hey, that's our old bodies groaning. Where the Bible says all the world groaneth and travaileth. You know, we groan now. However, later on, you won't. What a blessing that'll be. Now, as we look at this, we find out the great, the creator of the universe cares about you, and he does. We find out Jesus Christ died and shed his blood on the cross for your sin. Notice this. Without the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, there would be no hope. And there really wouldn't because the Bible says, notice this, the Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. No, there is no forgiveness. So thank God for the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He shed for us because I, I can't pay for my own sin. You can't pay for your own sins. Though, but there is one person that has done that. He's paid for your sins. As we look at this, he was buried and rose again the third day, proving that he was the Son of God and he could save you like he said he could. The Bible says the Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, 2 Peter 3, 9. Jesus Christ said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him, Revelation 3. If you died today, my friend, where would you go? Would you go to hell or would you go to heaven? Would you go to hell or would you go to heaven? Are you 100% sure that you go to heaven? I said 100%. How many times I've knocked on the door and said, sir, if you died right now, you're 100% sure you go ahead? Well, maybe. Wrong answer. I got baptized. Wrong answer. We came across somebody this week said, well, we got baptized. That's not salvation. Now, my friends, let me say this. I am a Baptist. I believe in baptism, but I don't believe baptism will save you. It will not save you. Jesus saves. My hope is in the blood, not the tub. Amen? Do you see what I'm saying? So anyway, the thing about it is, is that, now that's a cult. That's a false religion that teaches that. So we don't want to be involved with that. Get out from among them. Be ye separate, saith the Lord. Now, notice this. Are you 100% sure that you go to heaven if you died right now? Now, it's either yes or no. Either you are sure or you're not. One or the other. How about it, my friend? How, about, how, how is it with you? I hope, Lord willing, it's yes. Now, if it's not yes, you can get that taken care of. It's real simple. All you need to do is talk to preachers or my wife or myself. We'll be glad to talk with you and show you how that you can go to heaven and not to hell. Amen? You see? 
And by the way, it's not joining a church. I was a church member. I was, I was faithful in church. I was just a Sunday school teacher, but I wasn't saved. So just being in church doesn't mean a person's going to heaven. Amen? You see? A church can't save you, but Jesus saves. That's the difference. Now, Father, I pray to God you please bless the uh, folks here that are here today. And, Lord, please be with the pastor and as he finishes this up. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Preacher.